What's up guys, Captain here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do my best to help you reach new heights in your ranked ladder by giving you 10 tips to apply to every single game you get into. Winning is one of the best feelings you can get in the finals, but it is also a very fleeting concept, requiring your focus to the very last second of every single round. Every week, I receive tons of messages from players asking me why they are losing when they actually have awesome scores at the end of every round. Sadly, this cannot be answered with a simple answer, but luckily, there is a recipe to follow if you want to give yourself the best chances at victory. Pay close attention to every tip, and especially the last one, because they are each a part of a whole that you will need to master if you want that diamond badge at the end of the season. On the other side, making these videos take a lot of time, so if you want to show your support, you know what to do. Enough with the introduction, let's get into the video. The first tip for today is to learn how to use the meta to your advantage. I know, this sounds obvious but you would not imagine the percentage of players that jump in their ranked or unranked game believing that they have spent enough time on their sword gameplay to bypass the known reputation issues of playing light with a melee weapon or pushing the KS-1216 on their heavy because that's the gun they picked the game up on 5 months ago when they started their season 1 and have been rocking it since the start. The concept of meta has arisen with the concept of patch notes. This is not to be annoying, but clearly because game designers make weak or strong changes to their games to keep their player base on their toes and avoid repetitiveness to break the player's enjoyment of the game. That being said, it does mean that if your favorite gun was heavily impacted by an update, you should seriously consider putting it aside until things get better. Consider this. If your weapon is a 10 out of 10 on patch 1.0, it gets heavily nerfed to an average of 5 out of 10 on patch 1.1, your skill and knowledge of the game will give you a chance to raise the bar to a 7 or 8 out of 10. But that means you will have to consistently play the best version of yourself and be on top of every single game, which, firstly, if we're being honest, is not realistic, but also means that you would be giving yourself a hard time just for an 8 out of 10. On the other hand, if you then accepted to switch your gun for the new meta, 10 out of 10, your lack of experience on that gun might bring you down to an 8 out of 10 for a little while, but this would come easily and effortlessly. On top of that, the experience you take on that gun will gradually bring your level back up to a 10 out of 10. Following the meta is a very strong and easy demonstration that you understand the game in and out and is a guarantee to go higher on the ladder. The second tip I have for you today is to find yourself good teammates. Obviously, this is not as easy said than done, but it is nonetheless critical if you intend to go higher on the ladder. Now, of course, solo queue exists, and you can absolutely manage to rock your entire season up to diamond by playing solo, don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for quick and simple tips to win more games, this should definitely be on the top of your list. Let's consider what happens when you launch a ranked game. I will skip over the enemy's side and focus on what's happening on your side of the barrier. If you launch a game solo, the variables that all need to go well for an easy upcoming game would be Team balance Are you following the meta with a double heavy medium? What guns is your team pushing? Double light with one on the sniper and the other on the M11 is a guaranteed loss, no matter how good you are, for example. What gadgets are in your hand and in your team's loadout? Can they synergize? If both your mediums are running zipline, that's not going to get you anywhere. What specialization are you all going to have access to? Evasive dash with mesh shield is probably not your best combo out there, etc. On top of that, you will only have one game to align your thoughts, gameplay, communication, calls and more. And even if you do manage to do so, by the time things are running somewhat smoothly, you will probably already be at the end of the game. On the other hand, having a trio queue pre-made gives you not only the chance to correct everything I just mentioned, but will usually lead to more fun playing. You will evolve together, plan and correct things together, enjoy wins together and suffer losses together. This is how team-based games are meant to be enjoyed. Our third tip of the day is please, please, please give communications. Now, those of you regulars on my channel know that I vouch for comms on beyond anything, except maybe that objective overkills. I always say that even if you are shy, unwilling to talk or anything else, at least have your comms on at all times if you launch a ranked game. Just out of respect for the players taking the competitivity seriously, they should have the possibility to reach out to you in-game. But let's go a little further today. Today I will defend the fact that not only should you have your comms on at all times, but if no one is making the calls, you should take the role upon yourself. 
If you want to go higher in the ladder, somebody is going to have to take the leading role, simply because that is exactly how this game works. Beyond gold rank, any push or any defense will require coordination and that cannot be obtained if no one is speaking. That is true for solo, duo or trio queue. Let me reassure you on the role itself. Giving calls doesn't require extensive knowledge of the game. It doesn't require you to understand everything or make mind-blowing game plans. Simple calls like one on the roof, I'm pushing the cash out, going for the respawn can make a whole difference. At the very least, that will give you and your team a level of synergy that any team without a leader would not have. And remember, except for the final of a tournament, you only need to be within the top two. You can statistically easily consider that at least one of the four teams will not be making any calls. That means you realistically only have one team to beat to reach the next round. Let's go for a very important tip four of the day. Pay attention to the enemy team formations. This is on one side critical, but on the other also quite simple to do. At the start of every round, take 10 seconds to look at which classes are being used by the enemy team and concert with your team to discuss which team seems like the most dangerous on paper. Obviously, the answer will depend on the current meta, but as long as you pay attention to the game a minimum, it isn't difficult to spot out the typical strong team. As of now, any team running with a double heavy medium should be considered as dangerous. On the other hand, a team running heavy, medium and light will probably have gaps you can exploit. Going for the easy kill against the light build would quickly change the fight to a 2v3 and give you a strong advantage to finish with a team kill. On top of that, understanding enemy formations can also give you sufficient knowledge to influence a game beyond the results of your own team. For example, if you are a platinum player and that you somehow end up against two other platinum teams plus one diamond team, you can easily support the platinum teams in scoring or stealing cash outs when they are fighting against said diamond team by only shooting at the diamond players. It is not easy, but can often lead to the elimination of the team you are targeting, giving you a stronger chance to end in the finals against a team that is closer to your level and therefore a stronger chance at winning the tournament. Tip five. Don't be a one-trick pony. For context, and those who would not have heard of this wording, a one-trick pony is a player who tends to play one class, one loadout, and will not change whatever happens. Understanding every class, how they are played, their respective strengths and weaknesses, which guns are better in which situations, and the limitations of each class's gadgets and specializations will give you a very strong edge over the enemy teams. This will be more and more applicable as the game gets older since players are taking more and more experience and therefore learn to counter each classes. As an example, in higher ranks, if you are outplaying every round with, let's say, a double heavy medium class, and they see that the medium is only playing healing beam, sustaining the two heavies and enabling their rampage, you can be sure that once the final round has arrived, their sole target will be to kill the medium and they will choose their loadout to make that happen as consistently as possible. If you are that medium and are only good at healing, if that is removed from you, even if alive, this is already practically a 2v3 for your enemies and you can already kiss your victory goodbye. To outwit your opponents, you will need to be smart. To get smart, knowledge is power. Do not encapsulate your capacities just because you feel safer with a gun that you are used to using. Our sixth tip for today will be to use your gadgets and specializations. We can all agree that on paper, this sounds pretty basic. But you cannot understand the number of players I see packing their healing beam and ending their game with 500 or less support points. Another example would be heavies using their charge just after they respawn to simply accelerate over 3 meters and have their character scream like an ogre, resulting in their charge being under cooldown at the start of the fight. To make this easier, consider that your loadout doesn't only concern you. Your loadout is 33% of your total loadout, and that is true for every player in your team, which once put together is the totality of your loadout. Every time you fail to use a gadget or a specialization, you are harming not only yourself, but you are drastically lowering yours and your team's chances at victory. There will never be a perfect time to use them. In the game The Finals, every action taken by a player can impact the way a fight is going and will require a reaction from the enemy team. Keeping the example of the charge for heavies, if a heavy charges at a team, he will instantly taunt the enemy team and grab their attention for a couple of seconds at least. 
If synergized properly, those couple of seconds can give you and the rest of your teams the edge to focus on the right target, take him down and create a gap in the enemy defenses. Here comes our next tip, learn to third party. Now this one, if I'm being honest, hurts me to explain. I've never been a great fan of the concept of third partying and the fact that it has spread within every meta of every first person shooter game out there. But the reality is that it has and that this cannot be ignored if you intend to win. Again, considering most ranked matches are four teams deep and that there are two activable objectives, you will most of the time fight a one team versus one team or a 1v1v1. My advice is to always go for the 1v1v1. You can of course choose the one versus one, but that means you are measuring your team's skills against another team in direct frontal combat. On top of that, the finals gives access to players to a lot of defenses or defending gadgets, meaning that most of the time the team will be ready for the fight and you will not only have to outsmart and outplay the enemy team, but also their defenses. On paper, before the fight even started, the defending team already has an edge on you that you will have to overcome. On the other hand, using the third party angle changes the rules of the fight completely. Not only will the first attacking team probably destroy most if not all of the defending team's defenses throughout their fight, but there is a strong chance that they will kill at least an enemy. Even if they didn't, and the defending team kills them all without any issues, they will not be in the same mental state after eliminating one team as they were before any fight happened. It might sometimes feel counterproductive to wait and hide while the team has their backs to you, but if you are good at reading what is happening, you can easily enter the fight at a more advantageous moment and clear the entire point with barely any efforts. And that, my friends, applies to every level of the game, from bronze to diamond. If the enemy team is not mentally ready to counter a potential third party action, which they rarely are, there is a high chance that you will take this fight on and end victorious. Eighth tip of the day, do not blame your teammates. This one is particularly difficult, but also a skill that will help you get better in every single competitive game you might enjoy. Consider this, you cannot best influence your team to be better or worse. But the only element you can control consistently in every single game is yourself. Getting annoyed, angry, insulting, questioning, or anything else at your teammate will never end well. You cannot give your teammates muscle memory. You cannot give your teammates a better understanding of the game in real time. You cannot give your teammates a better aim. But you can strive to do all that to yourself no matter what your level is. There will always be a ceiling to break through, a record to pass, or a detail to master. Even if you are finishing every round with a 15-0 and losing because your teammates are 0-15, you probably should learn how to coordinate with them better. Always keep in mind that in most cases, the players in your ranks have gone through the same difficulties as you have to get to that level. They have somewhat of a similar understanding of the game and somewhat similar capacities in-game. You might be better, but that doesn't mean you can achieve more without them. Spend your time understanding your mistakes rather than theirs. Use your experience to push them higher rather than to point the finger. Even a team of silver players will have platinum level if led properly into battle. And even if, at your best efforts, things don't work out, consider that there are games that are absolutely unwinnable. No matter what you do, it was leading to defeat. And that's okay. The same as some of the games are unlosable, you could play with your eyes closed and your back to the screen that you would still win. Don't tilt, stay focused, and take every teammate as your short time brother in arms. I guarantee you will see fast and efficient results. For our crucial tip number nine of the day, take breaks. Yes, big surprise, you are not a machine. Whatever you do and however good or bad you are at the game, you are playing encompassing emotions. It is these emotions that can often tilt the balance of the game in or out of your favor. The easy example to prove my point would be to focus on defeats and say that obviously, after a defeat, your mindset is impacted and however strong you are mentally, it will play a certain role in tilting your mental and that can lead to errors in-game that themselves can lead to additional losses and you are now stuck in a vicious cycle. But let's put it the other way around. Let's imagine you have just come out victorious of a 45 minute long tournament. You have just won your first two rounds by a landslide and destroyed the enemy team in the finals with a 2-0. Awesome. You now feel great, 
proud and you are ready to take on anyone in the world. Well, the reality is that these thoughts have sourced from the adrenaline and other brain-injected hormones, and you, despite what you think, are already blurred by the rush of victory. I am sure you, like I, have experienced this countless times. The sad and sour defeat after a strong win. This time can obviously be because you've ended against a stronger team, but it can also be because you came in the first match with the intent to fight with everything you have to ensure you come out victorious. But once this was reached, you came in the second game thinking, we are better, we got this easy. And suddenly, you and your team are full of gaps and don't even see them, blinded by the rush of your previous victory. Take breaks, regularly. A few minutes are enough to clear your thoughts and jump in the next game with the right mentality. The cherry on top is that you will not only be able to take this break time to reflect on mistakes that could have led you to the defeat you just faced, but moreover, you will enjoy your victories much more that way. If you just launch a new tournament right after having won one, where is the pleasure of the win? Again, you are not a machine. There is only the fun you take out of every round you play. And for our final tip of the day, objective over kills. I absolutely had to make this my final tip of the day, and there is nothing more important in the entire video. The finals might be a first person shooter, but it doesn't resolve even a little bit around the kills you or your team makes. You can steal a last second cash out just by starting a steal when there are explosions all around, covering the alarm noise of the cash out, stealing a $22,000 vault without shooting a single bullet in the round, and therefore winning the entire round. Killing should be considered as a decision and not a result of an action that you were pulled into, or even worse, initiated. Going to kill that light player might mean that you left your tank without healing and let him to die on his side. You might have taken that light out, but your team has now lost its tank. No need to explain how that ends. You should only go for a kill if you and your team have a plan and that this kill will support said plan to capture the objective. Think of Counter-Strike. We have all seen clips of pro players who manage to hide and end up in the back of a player with access to a simple kill. But the pro player decides to wait without doing anything. And now, two more players came out and he has now three easy kills instead of one, which, once killed, now give him full and free access to the bomb site. It is the same in the finals. Choose to reveal yourself, fire, kill or take actions at the one crucial moment that will simplify your capture of the cash out. This will circle back to every tip you've heard in the video, because it is probably the hardest to respect. But if you manage to discipline yourself enough to always keep that in mind, you are already on your way to diamond at the very least. If you manage to discipline yourself and the rest of your team to follow this guide, you are now on your way to the top 500 of the server. And here was the 10 most crucial tips to win more games in the finals that I could give you. Remember that you will need to follow through with every single one of them if you intend to reach diamond or high diamond. This takes time and commitment, but as long as you stay true to yourself and have fun doing it, you will get there eventually. I'd love to hear what your best advice is to attain victory, so don't forget to comment down below. We've currently managed to cash out $385, but we are going to need a whole lot more to reach victory consistently. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button to support our cause. Now, the last thing that remains to be said, my friends, is that I will see you on the next one.